Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Stan and in this one, I've got something really exciting I wanna share with you guys. This right here, this is the EK Quantum X Delta Tech. Uh, this is a new water block tech combo that EK recently came out with. There was a few videos of this product on YouTube that came out late last year, but it wasn't available for, for purchase until recently. And I managed to pre-order this item. So we're gonna be taking a look at it, uh, basically what it looks like, the different components. And uh, this is gonna be going into a build of mine in the upcoming months. So I wanna see what this is all about. Right off the bat, my initial impressions of this thing, uh, normally EK boxes are usually orange or white, uh, but this is my very first time unboxing an EK product that is completely black. Um, the design is of course usual EK, so that's not a surprise, the internal box here. Now this product is essentially a water block with a tech sandwich in between. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. In the box here, we get some mounting tools. It looks like we got a bracket and some of that EK ectotherm and, and the screws and springs and everything like that. So we'll put that to the side for now. This right here is a sticker pad that you mount to the back of your motherboard. This prevents the condensation from building up. It's kind of like an insulation pad. So. As your tech is pulling down the temperatures on the CPU side, it's possible that uh, it gets really cold on the bottom of your, of your motherboard, and this is gonna be helping with that. This right here, this has gotta be the CPU block. Check this out. All right, so this is definitely the water block, and you got one outlet, one inlet, with mounting screws to mount the controller, which we'll take a look at in a moment here. But this right here, this is interesting. This is the rubberized gasket to prevent any condensation from building and it looks like this is the integrated so there is a foam piece here which i'm sure you can just pop out like that so underneath here is the copper block and the way this thing works is it sits on the cpu and this right here prevents air from getting inside this area so because air has moisture and if you have moving air, then you have a constant source of moisture. And especially if your block is very, very cold, then you're gonna be potentially having condensation inside here. And uh, this little, this gasket is to prevent that. Now, what I was mentioning was interesting was this gasket is a permanent fixture. And if, if you can see here, this wires stick out of this and it looks like almost as if this rubberized gasket was molded right around the wires or they drilled the hole, pulled the wires through and then they mounted the clip. So basically what I'm saying is the wires cannot be detached from this, which is no big deal, but um, it's, you have to use this gasket. Now in between here, what you can see is uh, the tech is sandwiched in between right here right? And you've got the water block side, which the water flows through on this side. And then you have the cold block, hot block, cold block, cold plate, cold plate. That's what I want to say. The cold plate um, on the other side, because uh, the way the tech works is it is essentially a solid state heat pump. It pulls heat from one side of this, uh, the, the tech to the other side. It's not um, creating any coldness or creating any heat because you can't do that. You could only move heat, right? So what it does is it moves heat from one side to the other side. So you have a hot side and then you have the tech sandwich in between, uh, basically a ceramic block right, in between. And then you have the, uh, the hot side. Can I say cold side? Hot side, right. Uh, so you're basically moving heat from one side to the other side and the heat gets dumped into your water loop which is then radiated out by radiator. For the wires here, we have a wire for the controller, and then we also have a two pin connector, which also connects into the control module. So let me pack this away real quick, and we'll take a look at the control module. All right, this is the control module. And 
This is a full aluminum casing. Sandwich in between is the PCB that controls everything. And this is meant to sit on top of the water block once you screw it in like that. So uh, of note here is you've got three connections, three, three connections. You have a eight pin PCIe to power the tech, which uh, eight pin PCIe, this thing is rated to go all the way up to 200 watts of potential power draw. And you have a two pin that comes out of this controller that goes into the tech, which powers the tech. And then that two pin white controller that probably goes ah, right here. So again, basically you have all your connections right here. So you've got your eight pin, you, you know, your two pin, and then another two pin connector right there. Also of note, you have a USB connector right up top and they include a USB cable uh, that connects to this. And this is a mini, mini micro USB, mini USB. I can never figure out which, what's the actual official name, but it's kind of, it connects into here. And on the other side, this is a five pin USB connector that connects into your motherboard. Now, I really would have wished that this was an L bracket, um, an L shaped USB connector, because you know, if you imagine this is sitting on your motherboard, right? Water block motherboard and everything. And this connector is sticking out like this and it has to go somewhere else on the motherboard. It's really unsightly. So I kind of wish this was an L shaped cable. I'll probably be buying another cable to see if I can get that to come out and then go over L shaped. What I really needed to do was to figure out which way is it a left angle or a right angle just to make sure everything's right. So it looks like indeed the little pins or the locks on this is facing this side. So it looks like I need to have one of those left angle USB cables. Anyway, uh, this whole thing sits together like so. So you need to have a little bit of clearance up top to be able to mount this thing. And again, you have your two screws here to be able to mount. And, um, Probably you're going to be able to mount it either like this, or you could probably rotate the water block 90 degrees. Just kidding. You can't, you, you, you won't be able to, because, uh, now that I think of it, the water blocks going to have to sit on the motherboard in a specific orientation because this right here, this is the clamp for the CPU bracket and it's got to have that specific shape. So, it's been a while since I built the Intel CPU. So, so it's, I think the brackets on the bottom or the right, I can't remember, but anyway, this is where it's going to be. So that this bracket's going to have to be oriented in that specific way. So let's talk about this cooler. This cooler was specifically designed for uh, Intel platform because this was co-developed by EK and Intel. And it was specifically designed for LGA 1200, even though this is probably compatible. I think they did actually confirm that it was compa backwards compatible, but uh, what Intel really wants to use this with is the thermal velocity boost, which is available only on the LGA 1200 series CPUs. So the way thermal velocity boost basically is you make sure that keep it below a certain temperature and then it can boost higher, kind of like PBO, a precision boost overdrive on AMD system. So uh, I think the key is to keep it below 50, 70 degrees Celsius or something like that. Um, and this is right here, this is gonna be able to keep it at, well, sub-zero temperatures if you really wanted to. But um, with this controller here and the humidity sensor on this controller, you're gonna be able to maintain a specific temperature set point above dew point so that you're not getting condensation and that's gonna be anywhere from 15, 17, 20 degrees, depending on where you are and how humid it is, but uh, 20 degrees C or less probably on your CPU. So that's, that's a pretty big deal. In my next build, which clearly is gonna be an Intel uh, build, it's purely for gaming and it's gonna be a Rocket Lake 11900K. Um, I have been seeing some CPU bottlenecks on my Threadripper Zen 2 Threadripper system. So that's kind of why I want to build a dedicated gaming system. 
That way I can really take advantage of a single, strong single core. I thought about going Ryzen Zen 3, but with this cooler right here, I, this is just too cool of a cooler to, to, to not play around with. So that's why I'm going Intel. And Intel's 11900K is gonna be a little bit stronger on single core. Um, performance, IPC, and clock rate. If I can clock this up to like a 5.5 gigahertz, right? That's gonna be better than whatever AMDs have to offer in gaming. So that's that's my justification for going this route. Anyway, if you wanna see more of this cooler and the final build, uh, I'm gonna be doing that build whenever Comet Lake comes out. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and comment down below if you've got any thoughts about this. Anyway, my name is Stan. I'll see you guys in the next one.